Welcome back to another recording of the Elevate Media Podcast. I'm Chris Anderson, your host. And if you're a freelancer, photographer, videographer, or another freelance individual trying to build your thing into a team where you're not doing it all, you know, visibility is a big part of that. Getting the word out about what you do, adding value in your community so people know who you are, they like you, and they're going to trust you and come to you for work. So we're bringing on a guest today to talk just about that, how to DIY local media coverage, getting that PR going. Uh, and I'm super excited to, to have this guest on today. He's He's been doing this since 1998, so he knows a little bit about it, right? So uh, get ready. If you're looking to grow, uh, get more leads locally uh, through, through PR and media, this episode's for you. So Mickey Kennedy, welcome to the Elevate Media Podcast today. Oh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Super excited to have this chat with you, this conversation. Um, so yeah, you know, we're in the day and age, you know, digital, right? Social media, everything's online, emails, things of that nature. But you would you would uh, argue that it's still beneficial to get out there, you know, in your community with media and PR. Is that right? Correct. Um, I, I believe very strongly that uh, earned media is one of the best ways to help your business. Uh, I've been doing it for a really long time. Um, a lot of people challenge and say that press releases don't work anymore. And I'm the first to agree that 97% of uh, press releases that are out there, press releases that are going over a real wire, uh, are, are not getting earned media. And, uh, you know, my, my answer to that is, Look at the 3% of press releases that are generating art media and are there patterns? Are there strategic types of releases that you could be doing that are meaningful and uh, are going to give you a much more likely chance of success? And, you know, for example, uh, the one type of press release that I've never had fail when I've coached someone through it is to do a survey or study within your industry. And that sounds like a, you know, a huge ask, but it's very simple. Um, it's just a matter of putting together uh, a few questions. I like Survey Monkey. I usually do four questions per page. So I do three to four pages, 12 to 16 questions. Ask questions that are really timely. What's going on right now in your industry? Uh, what are the questions you would ask uh, others and uh, you know, competitors at a conference? You know, like, hey, have you noticed this or that? Um, you know, network with people, uh, you know, go to LinkedIn, ask people, hey, if I was to conduct a survey of our industry right now, what are some of the questions you would ask? Ask those questions. Also look at, you know, what's going on overall. You know, uh, it seems like workplaces have transformed post pandemic where a lot of people don't want to go into the office anymore. So, you know, are you having challenges with culture? Are you having challenges hiring people? Um, you know, are, are you having trouble with management trying to adapt uh, to these new uh, sort of demands and requests by people. So, uh, you know, just look for those types of things. There's also, you know, AI is really hot. You, you know, uh, is is AI a threat to your industry? You can ask people, you know, hey, do you believe that AI is going to, uh, you know, put you out of a job in the next five years or something along those lines? So, uh, you know, then when you've got the survey results, uh, yeah. you're going to pick what was the biggest surprise there. What's the biggest aha and you're going to lead with that and write a press release about predominantly that question and uh, you're not going to ignore all the other questions you're going to put them on a page on your website you're going to link to it in the press release um, there may be the opportunity to mention uh, another data point in the press release but i generally focus the uh, one specific question on that press release the the, the biggest um, surprise there and you're going to have an amazing quote um, and by amazing, I mean, you know, it, it could be like how creative you are, wordsmith, or it could just be saying something so tight and so strong and, and paraphrased so well and powerfully that it, it just resonates, that quote. And if a journalist was to take that quote out, there'd be a loss, you know, an ache uh, in, in, in that article that they write. So, you know, really make that quote meaningful. And uh, generally, uh, when we do that and we send it out, uh, usually we get eight to 14 articles earned to media. These are articles that journalists wrote and drafted uh, based on your press release. It's not your press release replicated on websites. Right. That is a distraction. That's syndication. That's not really important. And, uh, um, and, and that really works. You know, the biggest uh, pushback I get from this is I don't know who to send that survey to. So yeah. you get a link from SurveyMonkey, 
Uh, you then approach a smaller independent trade association in your industry. And there are many, uh, you know, I, I've had people push back and say, well, you know, for example, I had one person say, Mickey, in our industry, there's only public relations society of America. And I had to explain to this person who was, you know, uh, much more senior than me, that there's over 470 U S trade associations in addition to uh, PRSA uh, that are out there. And some of them are very small and very esoteric, like, you know, Florida PR firms or Mid-Atlantic, but there are some that are, are you know, quite robust. Um, I think there was one for uh, PR firms of 50 employees or less, and that's the bulk of PR firms across the US. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know that if we, interviewed a really giant PR firm that there'd be one person there capable of speaking for the entire firm anyways. So, uh, I, I think that, you know, find one that's independent and small and you just approach them and say, Hey, could you send this link to your members in exchange? I'll mention you in a press release I'll be issuing over PR newswire. And, uh, when you tell them that they're, you know, they're much more likely to see this as a win for them. Potentially they could get some media pickup. They're small and independent. So not a lot of people know about them. They don't get a lot of media attention, unlike the large P, um, trade associations. So, um, by approaching them, they'll often see it as a win-win. It works about two thirds of the time that the first place, uh, that we approach will say yes. And, uh, so that's it. I mean, that's all that's involved and that can generate, you know, incredible, uh, media pickup for you. And I, I've never had that fail. Um, the least I've ever had someone I've coached that went through it was four articles, but they were very, uh, sort of esoteric. They were in the biometric industry. So it was a very right. specialized industry and they were yeah. thrilled with the results because they got four, uh, pickups in very, very specialized trade publications. And they were, they were very happy. And, um, so there are ways to attack PR and be meaningful and to break it down for a lot of people who are looking for local media, you know, uh, I, I say, don't use someone like me, uh, don't pay someone for, for local media. If you think about it, there is probably less than a dozen individuals who could write about you in your market. 12 people, that's 12 people for you to network and get to know. So, you know, start doing your homework, look at your local paper. Uh, who covers your industry? Who, what writer is more likely to cover your industry over time that you've noticed? Um, maybe you have to subscribe to the print publication, or maybe they have an online one that you can look at and do your research. Once you've identified that person, uh, see if their email address is online. Uh, if it's not, call and ask. And, you know, a lot of people feel like, oh, can you do that? Yeah. These are not celebrities. These are members. <laughs> of, these are members of your community. Um, yeah. they are, uh, news media, uh, they may ask what you want the email address for and just say, Hey, I'm a local business and I'd like to pitch this person, uh, with some ideas I have over time. Uh, sometimes they'll just forward you to their phone line. You can leave a message, just keep following up until you get that email address. Uh, I I've had one person say the guy just, uh, said, okay, pitch me right now. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what I would, what I would say in that case is I don't have my pitch all together right now. I'm a shy. English major type. I prefer putting my stuff in writing and overthinking it. So I really would love to get that email address and uh, be able to send that over to you. And uh, usually that, 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 that amuses them and, and they'll, and they'll do it, but yeah. it's usually not difficult. And this is something you only have to do once uh, for each publication until someone else comes in uh, that would be a better fit. Uh, okay. If you're lucky enough to have a business magazine or business newspaper, we kind of have both in the Baltimore market. Um, if you're, uh, you know, more of a, a, a consumer, uh, working mostly with individuals and people, um, you know, are there magazines, uh, that, uh, are in your market that would be a good fit? Uh, we have Baltimore magazine, which is sort of a upper scale lifestyle right. magazine. So if you're, you know, a wedding photographer or doing family stuff uh, and things like that, that would be a fit. Um, if you do a lot of commercial stuff or even both you know, the, the business magazines would also be a good fit. Uh, also, you know, look at, uh, TV and radio. Um, are there opportunities for you to brainstorm there, uh, things that you could do? Like, you know, maybe there is a, uh, uh, an event that you put together that would really create good, uh, audio or video and, you know, pitch it appropriately. If it's video, uh, you know, approach, uh, the, the TV stations, the news stations. And, uh, if you've ever seen a segment on there, 
where they've done something similar, where they've gone to a, a, you know, a charity event where uh, people are cutting people's hair for donations or something like that, uh, which I, I have seen before, uh, you know, ask who the producer or booker of that segment is and get their email address and then pitch them uh, something that you're doing that's really creative and uh, community minded and more more visual. So it would be really good to get some uh, video footage of it. Um, you know, and, and with radio, the, the same sort of approach can work. Um, you're just going to ask for who you would uh, pitch something like this when you have an idea to, and uh, you know, then get try to get their email address. But if not, you know, feel free to pitch over the phone, uh, put together your thoughts, and go there. Uh, when you are pitching these people, you do not have to have a prepared press release. Okay. All you need is a few sentences, um, just the idea, the nugget of what you're doing. You may want to add a quote, and I do recommend that you add a quote uh, because a journalist who looks at an idea and then sees an amazing quote that's mm. really strong and powerful, they can sort of visualize an article around that. And so that really helps okay. them uh, sort of uh, put the pieces together and see what they see what they're working with. Okay. Um, and, and then, you know, don't discount free weekly papers either. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of these are neighborhood specific, uh, but those are really great avenues for, uh, you know, reaching out to them. In this case, I might suggest something different where maybe you write an article yourself um, yeah. about a particular subject matter that, you know, maybe it's heading into wedding season and you've got some tips on wedding photography and, uh, you know, things like that. Like, you know, a lot of weddings will have professional photography, but then they also have, uh, um, you know, like QR codes where people can share stuff on uh, Google Photos or something like that. And, and they get candid shots. So maybe some tips on uh, that, you, that you can provide your guests uh, and things like that. So uh, when it comes to these weekly free papers, um, they are low on content. They are focused on just getting ads and then content is an afterthought. And, uh, I've had many clients who have, uh, approached, uh, these, these, uh, free papers and said, Hey, I'd like to do a, a monthly column and I get a byline and a little sentence about my business, um, at the end. And, uh, they mostly say yes, because it's <laughs> free content for them. The yeah. pushback, pushback they often get is i you know, could you do a weekly column? And I say, <laughs> no, 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 don't obligate yourself to a weekly. But sure. uh, what you'll realize is that uh, as you, you know, do communication and sharing, which is a great, you know, a lot of content, maybe it's as little as, you know, 350 to as many as like 500, 600 words, yeah. um, you know, on a monthly basis, you're just providing some good tips and resources for your community. And uh, it, it may not work you know, especially well for, uh, 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 photographers and videographers and things like that. But for other people and other businesses, I've, I've had it work really well, everything from dentists to p chiropractors, to people who are on wellness and, uh, you know, fitness instructors and things like that. So, uh, perhaps, you know, being creative and thinking, maybe you can find something that you could do with that, but, uh, just realize that, you know, people do, uh, peruse these, uh, you know, weekly papers, even though they're free. And if they see you and they get familiar with you and they get drawn in over time, uh, you know, when they do have a need, they're much more likely to reach out to you and recognize you. Yeah. And I think this is good. Like, and so you collect the data basically to recap this, collect the data from people in your market to get those answers, get those questions that you could possibly write the press release about, grab a good title quote for that press release. And it, have the relationship built with these journalists, with these papers to be able to send that to them. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, but like I said, with local media, you really yeah. don't even have to go through the effort of an entire press release. You okay. can get away with just a pitch, which is gotcha. a few sentences and, a, and have a quote. If you have some images and photos, uh, you know, be sure to include a couple of those or links to those. Um, you know, a lot of people are posting their stuff online, even if they're still print. And yeah. so having some images can really uh, give you an edge because these journalists know that, uh, you know, an article that they write that also features a really good photo or image is going to really uh, bring in and create more uh, better user experience for their audience. And uh, they'll definitely 
consider you over someone else who doesn't have that. So uh, be really creative and, and come up with something that, you know, some images or video that works really well. I find the media is using video a bit less than, than photos. So I would, I would probably be more photo centric with these. Gotcha. Is there a reason why they're more photo centric versus having video clips on there? I've gotten lots of different answers. One of the yeah. biggest ones I've heard is uh, that the attorneys and legal counsel to a lot of publications have said, you know, when we read, when we write an original article, we know it's ours. The copyright is ours. Sure. And, uh, but they said when it comes to video, it, it's a little bit, you know, harder to, to, to say, you know, if someone just steals the video that we've edited, is it ours or not? Because we yeah. live in a culture and stuff like that where everything's, you know, taken and stuff like that. And so, but I think that's silly because they'll take photos and right. photos are, are the same photos that everybody else has used. And they've been doing that for years. I also right. think that a little bit is just comfort of working with video. It's a little bit bigger of an ask to yeah. edit a video than it is to like crop a photo or something like that. So I, I think that it's a combination of those two. I, I think the legal thing is just, uh, it's a scapegoat. I don't, I don't really see it, but I think that over time, uh, you know, as we are already you know, becoming more accustomed to, um, uh, interacting with video, I think that there's going to be a natural evolution and a, a broader use of video. And that'll mean that, uh, there'll be more opportunities for people to, you know, use videos and add it to their pitches and, uh, press releases. And potentially there could be a time in the future where, uh, the entire pitch and press release is in a video format. And, uh, I think that's really exciting and cool. Yeah. I think it's, it'd be interesting to see how it grows because I think, you know, all the traditional media is having to adapt a little bit, right. With everything going on. And, and so it'll be interesting to see how that shift happens and where they go with, it. you know, I've seen a lot of online journals, like doing like a, like a paywall system, um, with their articles now probably because of that shift. Do you, do you see that? Do you see that being a hindrance to, you know, traditional media with the paywalls and things like that? I, I mean, I think it's, uh, it, it does limit the number of people that uh, potentially could, could see your article. But I also think that a paywall sort of enhances the value of it and that the people, the audience they do have is more protective of it. So uh, I know, for example, that when someone, uh, you know, reads an article in say the wall street journal, uh, which is paywalled, uh, yeah. you know, they, they, they feel like it has more credibility than something that just appears in Huffington Post where anyone can go and see it. So I think there's a little bit more of a, a cachet or value uh, assumed because it is, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, paywalled. But I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. Uh, yeah. I think one of the good things is that, you know, where we get uh, our media is evolving and changing. And at least in the case of newswires, um, in the U S we have a duopoly where it's PR and newswire and business wire that account for probably 95% of all, uh, 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 press releases that are issued over a wire. Um, and, uh, so, uh, if you're, you know, reaching them, you know, it does go to a lot of these new media. Um, I know that, uh, I follow a guy on TikTok called Snackalator that does a weekly roundup of uh, snacks hitting grocery store shelves and he pulls all of his photos. He says, uh, you know, uh, directly from the press releases on the wire. So, you know, he's utilizing it. Um, there's a lot of, uh, fashion influencers on Instagram who, uh, use the wire to get a sneak peek, uh, of stuff, uh, as soon as it hits and, uh, are able to share things like that. So, um, you know, who, who we consider media is changing. And I think that's yeah. a, you know, that's a fun thing. And it's becoming a little more diversified. What I don't like is the fact that, you know, there, there really is only two wires in the U S sure. um, there, there was a third one that was making inroads, but over the last 10 years, um, uh, because the, uh, journalism and, uh, newspapers have, uh, consolidated and run on hard times. They've, they've, uh, uh, you know, requiring journalists to, instead of write two articles a week, maybe two articles a day. And so they're expected to do more for less and they just weren't willing to go to a third newswire to hunt for stories. So uh, it just made that third newswire have to pivot, um, to basically just meet 
SEC uh, disclosure requirements for publicly traded companies and, you know, and also sort of tell p their smaller uh, publicly traded companies, do you really want journalists looking very carefully at your financials? So yeah. if, if not, use us and you'll save money. So uh, uh, that's it. In addition, there's a lot of wires out there and companies with wire in their name, but they're not news wires. They're not going to journalists. Uh, they're mostly in that syndication game where the press release gets replicated on a few websites. And I mentioned that that's not the goal and that's a distraction. Um, yeah. The locations that these uh, press releases get on websites are not places that people see them. And if you go to those news outlets 95% of the time and do a search, your press release won't show up because it's not part of their content management system. It's usually just a subdomain where these releases are just dumped in an RSS feed, mostly by headlines. And uh, it, it, it really is a distraction. And sure, it might be as cheap as $59 or $99, but uh, you're not gonna get the transformative uh, uh, opportunity that you do when a real journalist looks at you, your release and writes an article about you. I mean, I've had people who've, uh, uh, you know, got picked up in waste management, uh, trade publication, and it generated $30, $40 million in revenue. Um, you know, we have a case study on our website um, for an initiative that was set up shortly during the pandemic to help restaurants that were closed, generated over $10 million in revenue and over 100 articles. Um, um, you know, major places picked it up, as well as like, you know, many, many dozens of small newspapers across uh, the country and, uh, you know, all by just hitting send and paying $349, uh, you know, to, to go over a real wire. Uh, all of our releases go out through PR Newswire uh, and they go out nationally, which the wire itself charges over $1,600 for. And with us, it's like, you know, a third to 40% of the actual retail price. Yeah. And that's interesting because, you know, I've seen it like in just in my inboxes on social media, people like, Hey, we'll get you in Forbes. We'll get your article in all this. Is that what you're meaning? Like the subdomains, they just kind of dump it and it's not actually in there. So the, the, the paid placement's a little bit different. Right. Um, in, in the case of Forbes, um, you're going on a location that used to be dedicated to guest bloggers on Forbes and, uh, it's still sort of set up with that way, but it's sort of like they pay Forbes to have that uh, opportunity and then they get customers that pay them to sort of right. cover the costs and stuff like that. Um, again, those aren't locations on Forbes that are very easily searchable. Um, they're not the main places that people look on Forbes and they're not the print publication. Uh, and it's gotten to the point that when I'm in a room with marketers and someone mentions that they got in Forbes, we all just sort of roll our eyes and just know that someone paid, you know, yep. anywhere from 700 to $1,500 or up to, to get in there. And uh, it, it's not real earned media. And, you know, you might be able to fake some people with the logo because maybe, uh, you know, non-marketers aren't aware that it's just a paid placement. But um, I think it's really devalued the Forbes brand. I also think that it's not the focus because, um, you know, for, for that money, you could do three releases with me and, yeah. uh, and potentially if you're doing meaningful releases, get a lot of uh, media pickup. And, uh, you know, going back to strategic types of releases, yeah. I have an entire free masterclass dedicated to that. It's yeah. a very digestible. It's less than an hour long video. And if you don't know anything about PR, it's a great place to start because it, you start building press release ideas, looking at those strategic ones, you're more likely to have pickup. And uh, it's at uh, ereleases.com slash plan, P-L-A-N. And again, it's completely free. Um, I, I did it for my customers because I realized that if they do more meaningful releases, they'll have better outcomes and be more likely to stick with it and continue to continue to do press releases. And it's uh, been very effective. And that survey uh, that I mentioned before is one of those strategic types of releases that I go into detail there. Yeah, no, that's great. And I appreciate you sharing that and, and creating that for people. I think that's a huge, huge ad. And, you know, you, you've said a couple of times, I want to make sure we, we define it for people. You, You've said earned media a couple of times uh, in this episode. So can you break down what it means? What is earned media for those who might be asking? Sure, sure. So earned media is just media that, that you've earned. Um, um, in, the, in this case, it's articles, um, might be in, you know, uh, uh, on newspapers, trade publications, magazines, anything that you didn't pay for. Um, and uh, as opposed to, you know, uh, paid, uh, media, which is like the Forbes and other places where you, you pay for pickup. 
And a lot of people, uh, you know, don't realize the opportunities that are there with the earned media, because um, as you get earned media, the customers that come in through it are often not price sensitive. They, they read that article. They, they, they're like, yeah, I like this company and they want to do business with you. And, uh, they're usually, if you have a long sell cycle, they usually convert much quicker and, uh, just are much more loyal overall. And then you can also take that earned media, that link to that article that you got, like say New York times and share it with your leads, um, yeah. share it with your customers. Um, if you share it with your leads, you'll see your conversion rate among those leads will increase. The, uh, more people are more likely to convert. Um, a lot of people get close to that 50% mark that they need to get to and get over in order to do business with you. And some people get up to 48% and they just never quite got there. And so they never converted. And this could be what uh, tips the scales and gets them over on the other side. Uh, with customers, there's the this thing called churn. And, you know, there's a lifetime uh, in which customers generally work with you. And maybe it's, you know, three and a half years on average. Uh, but you know, if you get earned media in front of them, they say to themselves, Hey, let's not shop around this year. I know we've been with them for a few years and we were considering perhaps trying someone else this year, but I've been reading these articles. This is the right company. We should stick with them. So your churn rate is going to decline. And that, uh, cycle of how long someone stays with you is going to increase. And, uh, these are all because of the credibility indicators of, uh, earned media. When a journalist writes about you, it's almost like an implied endorsement and, uh, people get excited by it. And it really creates like a signal of trust. And uh, that's something that you can't replicate, um, you know, through paid placement or paid advertising. And I've, I've had people who've come back to me and said, is this possible? According to our logs, we got like 400 visitors from this article and all, over 200 of them converted. And I'm like, yeah, it is possible. Because remember, not everybody who read the article clicked through or went to your website. Uh, but those that did were probably more invested and wanted to do business with you. And your, 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 your price point was what, you know, a consumer product that's 40 bucks. So, uh, yeah, that's completely possible. And they're just like, I, I my best landing page for paid advertising is like 10%. This is just amazing. So, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And I think you're, you know, defining that. And I think, you know, the big thing is just doing the work, right? Connecting with these journalists, giving them valuable stuff that's going to you know, make them look good when they post it um, and, and bring it back to you. And um, and I think locally is a huge place to still do it and try. So uh, Mickey, this has been a great conversation. I know you've shared about the link, about the free course. Where can people connect with you uh, and, and you know learn more if they want to? Sure, so my website is ereleases.com. All of our social media is on the lower right. It's uh, my direct LinkedIn, which is a great place to reach out to me directly. Uh, however, if you have any questions or you're just wanting to um, you know, talk a little bit about PR, feel free to just use the phone number on the website or chat or email. Uh, we don't have any salespeople. We don't have any quotas or commissions. Um, I only employ editors, so you'll speak to an editor. And uh, if you have a release that you've worked on, and we do have templates and samples on our website, and you just want someone to look at it, uh, you know, feel free to send it to us. Allow two business days for us to get back to you. We'll do that free of charge, whether you're a customer of ours or not. We're just out there to help, uh, you know, small businesses and uh, individuals and freelancers of all different types. So, you know, we, we we're passionate about PR. We believe it works. So uh, feel free to lean on us if you have any questions or just looking for uh, another set of eyes to review anything you're working on. Awesome. Well, Mickey, appreciate it. Guys, definitely get uh, connected, uh, continue to learn, continue to grow, um, and share this with someone. Share this episode with someone who's trying to get out there, get the word out about their business, about what they do, because uh, this could really help them. So again, Mickey, thanks so much for being on the Elevate Media Podcast today. You're very welcome. All right. And guys, make sure you go out there, uh, keep putting in the work, don't give up, continue to elevate your life, elevate your brand. We'll talk to you again next time. 